Welcome back to today's news talk, TNT, and this is the David Curtin Show. And I am absolutely delighted to have Mark Windows back on the show. Welcome to the show again, Mark. Thanks, David, and congratulations, because you're the only person who welcomes me onto any shows these days. Well, there are a few, I don't know. but you're one of the few. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I hope you don't get a hostile reaction going on to shows. You shouldn't do. No, but I think it's what you wanted to talk about, you know, today about yeah. the way the media is and the way the yeah. gatekeep, etc. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. You know, j just in case people don't know you, uh, you run uh, Windows on the World um, channels .net, on social yeah. media. and, and uh, the, the website is um, windowsontheworld.net and everything's on there. We do a new show every Sunday, 8 p.m. UK time. And we have a massive archive of information. So I thought I'd get that in, yeah. No, absolutely, because there really is a huge amount of information yeah. that you put out over many, many years. And it's all fantastically useful. I mean, I don't know anyone who has you know, given so much in, you know, and put that out for free for people to look yeah. at. And, and you really delve in depth into what's going on uh, with the world, all the distractions, all the, the plays and, and things that are happening. And obviously, a lot of people feel that there's something that's really wrong with the world, but they don't understand it. They, they but, and, and you provide information about that. So I'd recommend anyone to go and have a look and start delving through the information you, you've got. But, you know, one thing that interests me, which you talk about a little bit, is, um, you know, what I would call, I think you would call as well, the mainstream alternative media. And this is yes. a phrase that some people are starting to use. I mean, can you tell tell us what you think that is and, and why we need to to be aware of it yeah when i started doing this was in about 2005 2006 and people were genuinely looking for solutions a lot of little internet radio stations started up most of us knew each other and mm. there was always a, a, an unhealthy injection of distraction even then but it was a bit rough and ready it wasn't accepted as the, the alternative media is now it was quite outside it and very marginalized. So there was little groups of people who had these little radio shows. And I think it started really accelerating after COVID. We got this plethora of grifting narcissists who want to tell, sell T-shirts and hoodies who are all self-promoting. So in other words, if you're not in their little club, they don't talk to you because they don't want this, the level of information out that some people have got because it shows them up, basically. That's the truth of it. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's also not just small outlets now. I mean, I know there are many, exactly. many of them, but they don't they don't give you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But there are huge things, you know, and, and, and I won't mention any names. You can if you want. But I go on, uh, you know, uh, some other stations. I've been on some other stations over the last two years. And I first of all, I thought, oh, this is good. You know, um, the, this is the people's channel. Um, but then I've gone on and, and as I've gone on through the years um now it's just turned into getting people to argue against each other so i go on some yes. panels on mainstream yes. alternative television channels they have me i'm on the right wing they have someone else on the left wing and they just they think it's a great show if they get us arguing with each other they don't care yeah, about that's all what it is saying. the host is there really like a referee and they just mm. set you against each other. I've seen that. And it's entirely pointless and energy harvesting. Mm. But it's the news cycle that people get addicted to. Therefore, mm. we have a mainstream, which is the imposed propaganda narrative, the accepted corridor of opinion and belief that people are allowed to have officially. Then we have the gatekeepers, GB News Talk Radio, where, as you say, people argue, I've seen you on there. And all credit to you, David, because you don't lose your temper with these people. I mean, <laughs> you're very, very good with them. You have amazing tolerance with them, actually. I've seen you against some of these, and you're, you're very diplomatic with them, which is great, and that's the way you should be, because what they want is obviously to you, you to ridicule yourself. And mm. the alternative is now repeaters, distraction, with a lot of misinformation injected into it and mostly it's distraction it's conspiracy mm. theory nonsense because we have to remember where conspiracy theory came from that is a state word and then we get the mm. other state word the other globalist word is truthers 
So they control right. them as well. So this world of so-called truthers, I've seen them, I've met some of the, the newly sort of indoctrinated into the truth program, and mm. they are embarrassingly naive about anything. They are mm. like little sheep who are getting led by a bunch of gatekeepers or worse. I mean, I think the problem is that because people have now seen it as a market, they're all competing with each other on YouTube. Well, the point is that if you're saying anything of any importance, you can't say it on YouTube anyway. Mm. You yeah, know, I, I mean, mean I... once you get to certain things, I mean, but half my stuff's been taken off YouTube, but I put things up there that I know won't get taken off because they go to Odyssey and, this, mm. and people repeat them and put them on other platforms. But what seems to have happened is that I've been doing this such a long time. This new wave of truthers, they don't want people with experience because it shows them up for what they are. So we made a show called The Conspiracy Grifters. Mm. And a load of, because people were putting it onto, we did a live stream and people were suggesting people, I was going, oh, not them, not them. <laughs> And then that kind of wound them up even more, I think. But it was kind of necessary. And I think it's very good that you're pointing it out because the alternative media is probably more energy harvesting than the mainstream now. Because with the mainstream, you can go and go, oh, that's the propaganda. I can see mm. what the BBC are saying. I can see what GB News are trying to do. But when you get to this other point, they're getting distracted by all sorts of things, like yesterday's solar eclipse or Kate Middleton's photographs. I mean, mm. none of this has anything to do with anything they are engaged in. And that is the thing with this new truther movement. It's all about sitting on the internet, talking comfortable conspiracy theories, but never facing reality. And that's what a lot of them are like, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I feel... Yeah, I feel very sorry for some of these people because they just you know, become aware something is wrong and they're looking yes. for someone to guide them and lead them. But they, they, we're almost overwhelmed by the number of people who you say are gatekeepers. This is a really good yes. word to use, who, who they can latch on to. And then, you know, when people are open to the new things because they're searching, they're almost open to everything, even things which are going to take them off into a cul-de-sac and lead them into a dead end and, and even get them to start talking nonsense themselves so i mean we're going to have a news break in a minute but just before we we do uh, how can people tell the difference between who is a gatekeeper and who is not who is genuine well i think the thing is if they're offering massive solutions that look improbable like the latest whistleblower there's been a mm. series of these people injected for the last 20 years. They all do the same thing. They appear from nowhere, make massive claims, mm. everything's going to change, then they disappear. And what I don't understand is people can't seem to get the cycle. And they say, oh, other people are just addicted to the mainstream news. But the alternatives mm. actually become worse because yeah. it's, it's actually discredited itself, which is terrible because having been there from the start, it's an embarrassment, you know? embarrassment yeah, yeah absolutely look we'll talk more after this quick news break which will just be a minute this is today's news talk tnt welcome back to the david curtain show here on today's news talk tnt and mark windows is here with me um so we were just talking before the break about the mainstream alternative media and gatekeepers and how they engage in distracting people and leading people off into cul-de-sacs when there are far more important issues um, to talk about. And Mark, one of the things that everybody is being divided on and everybody is being um, cajoled into taking a position on at the moment is the whole conflict in the Middle East. And that's something that I deliberately didn't speak about until the 7th of October, because I know people have very strong opinions. And I'm more concerned about the UK in this country. But but since then, I can't help but, you know, having to talk about it because I go on to mainstream alternative media sometime. Um, and, and the first thing that everyone wants to know is, what do I think about the Middle East? And I say something and then someone else says something and, the, and then it just turns into a big argument and it doesn't solve any problems. I mean, how can we get out of this? And what do you make of this whole situation? Well, I think that, geopolitical position within the state of Israel. You've talked about it, I think, very calmly and sensibly, and actually the lone voice out there. I'm not just saying that because I'm on your show. They're the only person who's given it some context. But you have to understand what it was, what the, mm. what the state of Israel was, how it was formed, why it was formed, what it actually is geopolitically. Mm. 
So let's leave the surface distraction out of it and then look further and have a look, for instance, at what Cameron was saying about a two-party solution. He's the last person on earth who would have said that 10 years ago. So something mm. is going on massively geopolitically with what's going to happen with the state of Israel. That's what I think personally. But to get back to your initial point that, yes, the, the essential issues are never addressed. It's mm. all about whether you're for or against but the actual solution, as you're saying, is never addressed. So what they do is they mm. throw you onto one side or the other, which is what we're talking about here. Now, mm. there is a fourth way where you can just discuss facts. And I believe that Windows on the world is there. So we have the mainstream, the gatekeepers, the so-called mm. alternative and facts. And facts aren't that popular with a lot of people. I know a lot of very good independent journalists who would never get on the alternative because they're not known on mm. there or they won't, certainly won't get on the mainstream. I met some of them um, over the years, and these people are actually putting their lives in danger. But then all this we're getting is this, the truth of heroes, the, the Julie Hartley mm. Brewers, or the, mm. or the BBC, and it's all the same nonsense. It's all the distraction. It's mm. information warfare, which information warfare manipula manipulates information, tar in information, which is trusted by its target. So I just wrote something down. Yes. <laughs> can read it now. <laughs> information yeah. warfare, it manipulates information which is trusted by its targets. So, so once people know that, then they have to get out of this mindset, but it takes time. Mm. And I, I've been so disappointed, David, by people who I thought got the bigger picture, and I will throw something in, and they will go back to this default position. It's almost like going back to the party political system when you're talking about mm. something which is way above it, like globalism. They go back and say, mm. well, it's this government. You think, wait a minute, you've listened to me talking about global governance for hours on end, and I've given you all the documents, and you're still going, oh, it's the Tories. Mm. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah. I mean, you must find this all the time, obviously. It is so disappointing. You know, the last four years, you know, there was a general sort of consensus coming up to Brexit by people, you know, who were for liberty, for freedom, whatever. I mean, I think the EU is is part of the globalist system. I wanted to come out of it. Not that the parties we've got in the UK are any better, but we need. That's why I've started the Heritage Party. But then lockdown came along, and it was disappointed that a lot of people who were for freedom just got stuck so into lockdowns. And then there was the injections, and there was the Ukraine thing. And then you know, if you didn't support Ukraine, you were a Putin puppet. And then the Israel Gaza thing, and that's even worse. And the, the, the programming for this goes back hundreds of years, you know, in terms of, you, you know, Christian Zionism and so on, which is yes. is deep generational programming. Yes, um, it all started with people like Queen Victoria, actually. Mm. You know, I mean, the, the British Zionism thing, British Israel, it's a fascinating mm. subject, actually. I love talking about mm. that stuff, but that's not really talked about. The, the issue is always whether Israel is doing the right thing. Mm. And, of course, it's clearly not. So th th there can be no argument about that. And what's interesting, I think, about this situation is that even the mainstream are now saying that. Mm. So there is a kickback to what's happened, which there should have been a long time ago, obviously, when it started. Mm. But something, as I said, is happening geopolitically that's very interesting that is not being talked about. And I've addressed it on a couple of shows because something's turning, something's changing mm. underneath the narratives, I think. I can see that. And it is very, very interesting. You know, that even Cameron, the war hawk, is now yes. saying, oh, well, we're not going to give unconditional support to Israel. And I, you know, I said that from the beginning. I think you and, and other, uh, other people who were aware of what's going on were just like, well, you know, I'm not taking a side in this. I'm, I, let's just not play into this game that we're being you know, shuffled around in because they, they want people to be divided. They don't care which side you take pro-Palestine or pro-Israel. They just want you to fight each other. Um, but th yeah. this is changing. It's, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, what, I mean, we've only got a couple of minutes left, but what do you think might be happening at, at a geopolitical level about this? I think we might see a different attitude to what the state of Israel is 
I won't mm. go into it too much because we haven't got time. But as yeah. you said, what Cameron said was landmark. And he goes to these big globalist events. So he is merely a, a, a voice, a mouthpiece for what the globalists are now doing. So mm. something is happening. And it also goes back to something Henry Kissinger said a long time ago about the future of Israel. And that, to me, is a very interesting subject, which maybe we can talk about next time. It would be good to talk about it with you again. There's so much to talk about. I, I had a lot yeah. of other topics that I was... Yeah, I was it, it flies, doesn't it, David? It flies, <laughs> David. I had so much, so much down here I wanted to talk about. Yeah. I know. It would, well, we need we need to talk for an hour about one of these Definitely. things or more next time. But look, Mark, it's been so good to have you on the show again. And uh, I'm looking forward to next time. We'll definitely take you up on that. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, David.